In this video, we're going to talk about cybersecurity as it relates to a range of different issues in artificial intelligence. In this picture, we are seeing a picture of a cat which is being recognized by a machine learning algorithm as a tabby cat, and it's 88% confident that it's tabby cat. With the slightest bit of perturbation adjusting the image in a particular way, we can get that same machine learning algorithm to recognize it as guacamole, which is a dish uh, made out of avocados with a 99% certainty. So this is an example of a targeted attack against a machine learning algorithm and comes from somebody who's very prominent in this field, Nicholas Carlini. So by the end of this, we hope to have covered three things. The basics of machine learning and where the vulnerabilities lie. The inherent biases and weaknesses in neural networks, which is another way of talking about machine learning. And the nature of threat actors for machine learning. So when we talk about AI, we, it's actually a range of different technologies which all aim to essentially emulate the intelligence and capabilities, intellectual capabilities of humans. So it's made up of more than just machine learning, um, which forms an underlying mechanism to AI, but it concerns itself with areas like natural language processing, the understanding of language, written and spoken, um, particularly speech recognition, to be able to convert it into something that the machine can then understand. Expert systems, which look at particular domains of expertise and try and help in making decisions that have had the best outcomes in the past. Planning, scheduling and optimization areas where we're looking at the optimal way of, for example, sending a ship around the world, picking up things and delivering them without wasting too much energy and time. Robotics, um, which speaks for itself, but robots of all sorts, including industrial robots, but also potentially humanoid robots. And then vision, recognizing images and video and being able to detect objects within that and react to that environment. This is all based on the collection of data which is then processed by techniques like machine learning, but um, other techniques as well. In this context, however, when people talk about AI, they, they are often just talking about machine learning and they use the two words interchangeably, somewhat inaccurately. So the machine learning pipeline starts with data collection and in this case, we've got some images of various objects like a hot dog, pizza, apple, grapes. And we use that data that we've collected of these images to do training. That essentially allows the model to train itself so that it can accurately classify these different objects. So to do that, we take the data we um, add labels to that, which is telling the machine learning algorithm what these objects actually are. We do the training and that develops the machine learning model. And during that process, we might adjust a range of different parameters, including the structure of the machine learning network. And we can retrain uh, as well once it's trained with the newer things that uh, come along. Um, so, for example, if we want to add the capability of recognizing ice cream, we could retrain the model with that type of image. And once we've got that model, we can take a test image, feed it through the model, and we go through a classification process to get to a decision about what that image is um, as an apple. So that's the testing phase. So the risks to AI are pretty massive and as attention um, is drawn to using artificial intelligence and machine learning in a range of different uh, ways that uh, attack surface in, in essentially the area that it exposes for cyber attacks to get to act on vulnerabilities to cause impact is massive. 
So as it becomes more embedded also in critical infrastructure and cyber physical systems, it uh, also becomes increasingly vulnerable to attack. Um, although these attacks have been known for some time, threats are largely ignored, mainly because our understanding of threat models of AI is at the moment poor but getting better. Also because AI is usually treated as a black box, so we don't know the actual way in which the machine learning model is operating, what basis it makes these decisions on. Even for the experts, this has been a problem of actually once you've trained it, you don't know how the network is actually detecting things and we can have a look at why that can lead to problems. Uh, attacks then become hard to detect because of this. There's also been a focus on the weakness of machine learning and AI without credible threats that would necessarily exploit them. So there's been a lot of work in adversarial images, for example, without consideration of how anybody would actually go and use this uh, in any useful or meaningful way. Obviously, all of this is changing as machine learning is increasingly used in cybersecurity defense itself. So uh, protecting against spam, phishing, network intrusion, antivirus, anti-malware, threat detection and vulnerability scanning are all areas in which uh, machine learning is being used. And in fact, the lab that we have accompanying this uh, looks at that. It looks at the models that can be used to recognize malware and how you can evade them. So a little bit of maths, but um, re reasonably simple. And this is essentially the basis for machine learning, uh, where we have a feature, which is X. We have a predictive function that operates on that, and it gives you an output. And it's as simple as that. So given a training set of labeled examples, so we have X and Y being the label, and we can estimate the prediction function of f by minimizing the prediction error, the cost on the training set. So essentially, this is how machine learning works. You give it a bunch of test data with labels, and you essentially keep adjusting f um, by minimizing the error each time it uh, tries to predict something. So if it predicts, you know, an apple, um, an apple that an apple is an apple and calls it banana, you adjust the algorithm until it starts saying it's an apple. And then you test after you've trained. You apply f to a never before seen test example and output the uh, predicted value y. So you do the training um, with known samples. Um, there are other ways of doing it, but that's the basic way and then you test after that. So machine learning is used pretty much everywhere. Um, speech recognition of personal assistants like Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, for example, in computer vision, uh, allowing robots and autonomous vehicles to recognize uh, their environment and objects. Image analysis, so face, facial recognition and general object recognition um, generally, uh, image manipulation, decision support, so risk analysis, medical decisions, cybersecurity and finance. In medicine, for example, you can feed um, a range of symptoms and observations to a machine learning algorithm, and then it can potentially predict what um, disease or illness uh, they may correspond to. Also, it's been used in research, so computational biology, astrophysics, computational chemistry, that sort of thing. One of the easiest things that you can apply machine learning to um, through the process of classification is to do what's called a logistic regression. Uh, again, we don't really have to worry too much about it, but essentially, if you've got a sample of data and it represents two different populations of things, then what you're trying to do is put a line through the point at which most of the objects that belong to one class are on one side and most of the other objects that belong to the other class are on the other side. And that way, if you get an object, all you need to do is say, is it on this side or that side? It must be one of these things or one of the other things. And that's called a binary classifier because it's essentially working out the difference between the two things here. When we look at the malware classifier, uh, Ember in the lab, that does uh, exactly this. It essentially says, 
is this sample malware or is it not? And then it will put it on one side or the other. Machine learning is made up and uh, again, if we're, we're not going to go into the details of this, you don't have to know about it for the exam, so relax. Uh, but machine learning uh, made, uh, is mostly made up of neural networks and that is a network um, trying to emulate the way that nerves and the neural system work in humans, humans in the brain and in the nervous system generally. So we have a what is called a perceptron, uh, a single node in the neural network, which essentially takes in some inputs um, these are all image pixels or words or anything that you can actually feed to the classifier. There is a weight um, that is the thing that you can adjust given to this that will determine that when it goes through this, it goes through like a nerve does an activation th function and then you can give it a value. And then that allows you to predict what that X actually is. There's an error in this process and that feeds back to adjust these weights um, as these come through. So uh, neural networks are made up of um, hundreds or thousands of these things. Uh, they go through an activation function of some sort and we calculate a value between 0 and, zero and, uh, 0 and 1 and we then use that to predict a label and of course that goes through a whole network. So to see how that might work what we can do is actually look at how we recognize handwritten digits. So we take an image of a handwritten digit, which is actually made up of series of pixels, 28 by 28, which gives you 784 pixels altogether. And here we see the number nine, and we see that it's sort of the classifier is given at 0.58 um, classification, something between zero and one of that being a nine. If you want to see the video that's associated with this, I highly recommend anything by Grant Sanderson. Um, he's excellent at, uh, uh, with these videos and uh, it's a fantastic video to watch. But this shows you how you take each of these individual little perceptrons and you combine them into uh, layers uh, of a neural network. And so what happens is that in the first layer, we have 784 different neural uh, perceptrons and that corresponds to one pixel from e each of this image. So you essentially flatten the 28 by 28 pixels into 784, you feed them into this first layer. It then passes it on to a second layer, which is called a hidden layer, another hidden layer, and then finally it will activate an output layer. And you can see that as each pixel comes in, it either activates or it doesn't. If it doesn't activate, then the thing, the pixels in this layer that this perceptron, or the, the perceptrons in this layer that this one is connected to will light up. Um, and it will light up if a number of these others are also lit up. And that's the way that nerves work. Essentially, they connect to a whole range of other nerves and they pass on an activation when you get stimulated and they'll either light up or they won't, and then that passes on to the second one. Again, they'll light up or they don't, and that finally goes out to an output, and it takes all of this input, and it says, yep, it's likely to be a four, and that's how it works. And then just training that is adjusting all these weights so that certain things light up and other things don't, and it's done by trial and error. You know, that's essentially the way it does. So it's 10 outputs, the range of possible numbers. Interesting thing about this, though, is that this, the neural networks can tell you what it thinks something is. It can't tell you what it doesn't, what it thinks it isn't. And that's a very important consideration um, which limits the sort of so-called intelligence of these systems. One of the interesting things about this is to actually think about how this is working in practical terms. So what is it that each of those layers in that neural network is actually recognizing when it's fed a digit? So, you know, the zero, for example, is made up of a series of different lines. And you can see that this essentially is a combination of all of these things. And 
ideally you want you'd want is that that you know you would recognize all these different segments um, but in fact you know sort of a nine could be recognizing the circle plus the second one could be right recognizing the one it doesn't necessarily work in the same way that human uh, nerves work and when that recognizes objects actually what um, it looks like when you uh, visualize what it's recognizing is essentially this mess over here so it's really not very clear how this works and this is quite important in the sense of that when you actually train a network it's not that um, clear what the neural network is actually recognizing because you just get this sort of noise and that has important consequences One of the problems, and I mentioned this before, is that random noise can be recognized as a number um, because the neural network, as I said, can't say, I don't know. And this is why things like adversarial inputs work. To look at some of the problems, we've got this famous uh, model or famous example of wolf versus husky. And this was a classifier that was used to recognize images as either a wolf or a husky, which is a, a type of dog that actually looks surprisingly like a wolf. So we'd take an image, put it through the machine learning model, and it would say, it's a wolf. And then we'd take a husky and put it through the machine learning model and say, it's a husky. So we'd train this model to do that. And when you predict, um, it turns out that, you know, this is great because you've got wolf, um, it's a really a wolf, husky and husky, wolf, 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 husky, husky, and only one um, mistake, which, you know, by all accounts is actually very good because it predicted that it was a wolf, but actually it was a husky. But it turns out that actually what the model was doing was not recognizing dogs at all so what the model was actually doing was recognizing the snow in the background so it turned out that the images that were being used to train the model and then to test it was essentially um, pictures of wolves wolves in snowy conditions and in fact the huskies were not in snowy conditions so what was actually used was you can see they um, analyze the um, neural network to see what it was concentrating on and it wasn't concentrating on this at all it was concentrating on the snow and so it predicted that this was a wolf simply because there was snow in the background and this is a very common problem with machine learning models and you see this and in fact uh, basically there's been other situations where uh, a machine learning model was re trained to recognize tanks and then when it was tried in the field it didn't recognize them at all well and that was because actually all of the pictures were taken when it was a sunny day with few clouds and that's what it was recognizing um, and when they trained they tested it it was on a overcloud uh, overcast day and it mistakenly decided that that wasn't a tank because it couldn't see the clear sky